Okay, so here we try to summarize the cases for the single layer. So we did for slab, for cylinder, we did not do for sphere, but this is something I expect you to do, to be able to do based on how we approached slab and in particular cylinder. So to summarize, the temperature profile we got for a slab was linear, temperature varying linearly with a, a position. And then for cylinder, temperature varies as natural log of, of the radius. And if we do the one for the sphere, this is what it looks like. And, and I expect to, you to be able to uh, derive this following uh, the procedure that we use for cylinder. Now heat flux if you is minus k dt dx. So if you take dt dx of this one, of course, it will be a constant. Um, then uh, if we do heat flux for the cylindrical coordinate, it's minus k dt dr. So if you take dt d, if you take dt dr here, it's going to have a, you know a whole lot of constant times one over r in there. You notice because of the natural log of r. Okay. So temperature is going to the or the sorry the the flux is going to change with r. And likewise, uh, for the spherical coordinate, if you do minus k dt dr, you notice that it's not a constant. If you take um, d dr of this, it's not a constant. So it's the flux will also change with radius. Heat flow, on the other hand, flow is over the entire area. So in this case, it's minus k dt dx times the area. Since the area is constant at any point, then flow is going to be a constant. Now for cylinder though, the dt dr, the, the flux, has a 1 over r term. So 1 over r term plus other uh, times other constant times the area. Area is 2 pi r l. So these two r's cancel. Again, you would have heat flow to be constant. Okay. Likewise, you can find for sphere the heat flow to be constant.